All right, let's talk, of course, about the NFC North. We're talking about the Lions, the Bears, the Packers, and, of course, the reigning division champion, Minnesota Vikings. Football is right around the corner. Training camp will be soon upon us. Some teams have already reported a training camp. We want to take this time to join with you guys watching to break down this entire division, how we think it's going to shake out. I think it's going to be an absolutely brutal division. A lot of good football among these four teams. That's why before we get into it, we want to hear from you guys, the viewers, in the comment section below. Give us who you think is going to win the division and your rankings, how you think the final standings are going to shake out. Make sure you post it in the comments we really want to hear from you guys a lot of smart fans of these nfc north teams but all right my i think we got to start where all the hype train is going and that's with the detroit lions look this is a football team that for a number of years was a little bit of a laughing stock they've turned that around obviously they had a winning record last season just missed the playoffs on a tiebreaker they made some key moves this offseason i think we talked about them adding a receiver mims to shore up some issues with jameson williams suspension this offensive line is really good jared goff has taken a lot of steps i think the biggest move is that their offensive coordinator ben johnson did not leave for another jump he stayed with jared goff in detroit even though he had a lot of great opportunities there is so much momentum behind this football team right now mys i think a lot of people believe this is the clear-cut division winner i am not 100 sold on it yet just because the rest of this division i think is a lot better than people are giving it credit for i think the bears are going to be better i think the packers with jordan love are going to be a lot better than people think and of course the vikings they may not be as good record wise as last year but look they're still talented i still think they'll be a competitive football team i think it's going to be a really tough division mys but i'm curious what your thoughts are on this right now the situation and everything with the lions and this whole division yeah nick i think there's a couple of keys here when you talk about the lions you look at this roster especially the offensive side of the ball, excellent offensive line, probably one of the best in the NFC, very, very good O-line, a lot of good weapons. You know, we would love to have Jamison Williams for the season, not going to happen. He's going to be out for the first six games. They have a good backup plan, not great, but I think it's a good enough backup plan to get themselves in, install the offense the way they want. Go check out our video. We talk about that, their whole uh, game plan for what they're going to do with Mims. But Nick, there's also some key additions here. Gibbs at the running back position, Laporta at the tight end position, and then they have Vitae uh, at the guard position. I think he's a new guy on this team as well. I think it's going to be really, really interesting to see uh, that going forward. There's just upgrades overall on the offense, and this was offense really strong last year. Ranked, graded out, I believe, eighth in the NFL. They add more dynamicism. They add more talent to this roster. I think it gets there. It's going to be at least there, if not better. This could be a top five scoring offense in the NFL this season, Nick. I think the defense, though, it also got a lot of good upgrades as well. I, that's the thing about the Lions. That's why they have the hype. It's because they keep building on an otherwise very good performance. I think Jack Campbell at the linebacker position looked really strong. Uh, it was a bit of a reach for the draft pick, but I think he's a very solid player, and I think he's going to be a really good addition for the Lions going forward. So I like them. I like what they have going on. I'm just excited to see that transition. I want to know how big of an impact Williams can make on this offense. And unfortunately, we're not going to know until the seventh game of the season. So that is going to be a big factor for me for Detroit. Yeah, and I think you brought up the offense being as good as it was last year. I think Warren Sharp was a lot of great analytics. He actually did some research and found out that the Lions had the fewest percentage of drives last season that ended in a three out, three and out. That obviously is a big help for the defense, the fact that your offense is that good. But here's the thing with the Detroit Lions. We know they're a solid team, and you said they got a little bit better, and I agree with you. They filled in some holes, especially on defense. But the reality is this team was a exciting young team that kind of came out of nowhere the second half last season. There's a lot of targets on their back right now. There's going to be a lot of pressure, and how they react to that is going to be interesting because there's a lot of football teams in this division, namely the Packers and the Minnesota Vikings. I'm going to focus on the Packers right now who are used to having the target on their back. And look, the Packers are the team in this division. They've got the biggest question mark. How good is Jordan Love going to be? But right now there is nothing but good reports about Jordan Love, that he's being a great quarterback. His passing is on point. His leadership, his understanding of the offense is all heading in the right direction. Of course, we'll have to see how it shakes out. But I honestly really like what I'm seeing because I look back and I compare him to what we saw with Trey Lance from the San Francisco 49ers a couple of years ago. The stories about Lance were not nearly as solid not nearly as positive as jordan love i think both those guys are similar stylistically similar how they came out of the draft small schools first round draft picks drafted because of their athletic potential jordan love looks good trey lance did not get these same level reports i think it's a great sign for love but this packers roster mice it's it's stacked 
They're great at running back. Their young wide receivers look better and better. Their offensive line finally looks healthy. Bakhtiari finally looks like he'll actually be able to play a whole season for once. I think at tight end, they're not as good as they'd like to be. But again, they're young. I like Musgrave. We'll see how that shakes out. Their defense is fantastic. Great coaching. It's the Packers. Great organization. Right now, the Green Bay Packers, I think, are being slept on a little bit. Because when I look at this roster, if you look at all four rosters in the division and remove the quarterback position, I think the Packers is the best roster. Yeah, I think it's really possible. I, one thing I love about the Packers here, Nick, this receiving core, including the tight end here, the youngest in the NFL by far. You got Dobbs and Watson, who are 2022 draft picks. You got Jaden Reed, the 2023 draft pick, and Musgrave, also 2023 draft pick. Really, really young. There's a long time. These guys are going to mesh together. A lot of rookie contract length left on here. I think that's going to be really good for the Packers for the future, but also these guys are all really talented right now. So I think this is going to be very good going forward for the Packers. I think love comes out. And with this, I think that is why they're going to mesh very well early on. All these guys, tight knit group. We see them. They're going out on the weekends. You see videos, pictures of them. They all seem to uh, be hanging out very, very well. I think that's key. You have to be able to get along and mesh and have good relationships between quarterback and his receivers. I love that so far. Uh, I love veteran Bakhtiari coming out and talking about Jordan Love. That's a guy who's very close with Aaron Rodgers, so he doesn't necessarily have to say anything. He's like, oh, well, you know, it's good. Everything's going fine. But he's shown strong, strong signs uh, of confidence and love so far. I think other things we need to pay attention to, uh, development, Rashawn Gary, I think he is banged up a little bit. Is he going to come back to form? That is a key to this defense, a big-time pass rusher out of Michigan for them. I think that's going to be a key there. Devondre Campbell, he was very, very good last year. I think he is looking like he could be very, very good again this year. So that's another step in the right direction. Uh, will this young uh, linebacker, Quay Walker, is he going to pan out? I think he was a little bit underwhelming last year, but maybe he makes the he puts all the dots together in year two. Linebacker can be kind of hard to figure out going from college to the NFL. So I expect him to be better this year rather than worse. So. Like you said, I think this Packers team, I think they're really good. I think there's a lot to like, but there are a lot of question marks, and that's why I'm not quite sure as to where to place them right now. Well, in their defense, like you brought up, some of those names was clearly the best in the division last season. They gave up 371 points last season. The Packers defense did. That's 56 points better than the next best team in the division. So they're clearly head and shoulders better defensively than anybody in that division, even with the some of the issues. You brought up Walker. You brought up Gary's health. Look, this is a football team in the Green Bay Packers that if you look at their point differential last year was basically even. They scored 370. They gave it 371. The team that won the division last year was basically at the same level. Minnesota Vikings, they scored 424, gave up. 427 but the vikings were kind of a weird team right they had a good record 13 and 4 obviously made the playoffs won the division before losing to new york giants but it felt like the vikings every game was a miracle win for them right they were always doing some kind of crazy comeback or last second score when they played anybody really good like they got demolished by the packers at the end of the season they got absolutely train wrecked by the dallas cowboys the minnesota vikings to me are one of these teams where i feel like they're a good team they're a solid team they're an okay team I don't think they're a playoff team this season. Look, I know I know a lot of Vikings fans may be disappointed by the reality, but look, I think you lose Dalvin Cook. I think the offense is going to take a hit. This defense, to me, still has too many issues. Jefferson, he's one of the best players in football. Kirk Cousins is solid. But I think this is a team that's getting older at the wrong time where it's getting older, and the rest of the division mice is getting younger. We've got a youth movement in the NFC North right now. That's why the Lions were a lot better than people thought last year, and they're continuing to get better. That's why the Packers, by the way, are, are going to be a good football team. You brought up how good they're and young their offense is. By the way, people talk about Jordan Love being young. He's been in the NFL a number of years. So he's not some rookie guy. This guy knows his way around football and knows how to handle himself. He just hasn't had a lot of experience yet to this point. But I want to talk about a youth movement team. We got to look at the Chicago Bears and we got to look at Justin Fields. This is the biggest wild card in the entire division. This is a team that made a lot of big moves, brought in DJ Moore. Their defense got a lot better with a lot of moves they made this offseason. They signed three linebackers. Obviously, a lot of great moves in the draft as well. I really like where this team is at. I think they're better up front. They're better on the offensive line. But the biggest question mark is if Justin Fields can live up to his physical talent, if he can merge into that role, if the playmakers around him step up, if more combined with Mooney, combined with Komet, pushes them over the top, if Justin Fields can be that good, this team may surprise a lot of people because they, they have, if it all works out, I think that by far the most athletically gifted quarterback in the NFC. Yeah, Nick, I think that is really big here. 
I think there's a lot of good upgrades, like you said. I think especially the running back position. I love Roshan Johnson. We talked about him a lot. I think he can add a lot to this team. I think they've upgraded the offensive line a good amount as well. Uh, Specifically, Darnell Wright at that right tackle, I think is going to be good. Question mark to me, you hear a lot of talk about Chase Claypool. Is he going to be a contributor this season? People talk about that. I don't think it's that big of an issue because you got DJ Moore and you got Darnell Mooney in here, and there's a serviceable upgrade behind Claypool waiting in the wings if it doesn't work out. So I, I kind of throw that notion out the window, don't you think? Let me ask you this, Mike. Do you think they should just cut Claypool, cut their losses? I feel like it's too much of a distraction at this point. Well, it, it would be one thing if from everything I see about the Claypool, the Claypool circus, everything going on, is if he would come out and be like, you know, I love this team, I want to be with this team, blah, blah, blah. It just seems like he's bitter about DJ Moore coming over to the team. He wanted to be the guy. You know, he's not the guy. So he's kind of doing his own thing. He's not coming out, standing up, talking about how he wants to be a Chicago Bear. So I kind of tend to agree that they should probably move on from Claypool, cut their losses, and keep this positive trend going forward. Because locker room yeah. canters are something to can really make a big difference. Yeah, and if they cut Claypool, there's no dead money, so they don't have anything against the books. He's on a short-term deal, obviously, figuring out uh, ending his uh, contract than he originally had with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They saved $3 million bucks in cap space. Not that they really need it. They still have $32 million free right now, which will roll over into next season at some point once the league year ends at the end of the regular season. So the Chicago Bears, look, I, th- I think moving off Claypool, clearly the right move. Because I think you brought up a good point with the Bears in terms of locker room cancers. Because this is a team of all the youth movement, of all the volatility they've had. They've got Justin Fields, young guy, a lot of young guys on a bunch of different positions on offense and defense. But they also... Added in a bunch of veterans, too. You look at Edmonds, that linebacker. I think he's going to be a great player. We talk about DJ Moore all the time, but you can go down the entire list of just the number of additions they did. I like Eddie Jackson's a veteran guy. Brisker's a young guy as well. you got a good mix of young and old across this entire football team. And we have all these clashing personalities from all these different cultures and backgrounds and different franchises. Any locker room cancer can really drag it down. So I think moving off Claypool sooner rather than later should be done by Poles and company. I think it will be done because I think it's a smart move to make. But the Bears, look, they're a lot better than they were last year. And I don't think they were as bad as they really, the record was terrible, but I think they were a better football team than their record actually indicated. Their offense struggled at some games. They lost a terrible game to Washington where they couldn't score at all. But then the second half of the year, their defense couldn't stomp anybody when the offense picked it up. They were the least complimentary football team I've ever seen in a regular season. If that just regresses towards the mean a little bit, this is an 8-9-10 win football team. And that means they're competing for the division title because I think this is going to be a brutally tough division. So if you look at all these teams, Mice, look, there's there's a lot of question marks here, a lot of concerns with a lot of different teams here, a lot of youth movements, a lot of guys in the Minnesota Vikings case that are maybe past their prime. Who do you think wins it in the end? Who do you think who who gives your vote to win the AFC North and 20 NFC North, excuse me, in 2023? I think it's got to be the Detroit Lions. I know they have a lot of hype, but for me, they're right up there. I'd say behind them to win the division this year it's lions and then there's a little bit of a gap but the packers right behind them then i've got the the vikings and the bears really close i love Kirk cousins i think he's a very consistent quarterback i all they have a really great receiving core as well i don't think the offensive line uh, he got hit so much last year i think that's something they gotta work on so i i would say it's really tied between the last two of the Vikings and the Bears, I think. But I think the Lions and the Packers are at the top for me. I agree with you 100%. I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers, though, in the top two. I think they're the top two teams, the Packers and the Lions. But people forget, and we talked about it in one of our other videos, is that Aaron Rodgers, for a lot of the season, was not good for the uh, Green Bay Packers last year. Like his PFF grade was 77.5. That's obviously, you know, that's that's solid. That's respectable, especially at the quarterback position. That's not Aaron Rodgers level football. And this is a team that if they get above average quarterback play as their offense takes a step forward, as Romeo Dubs goes down, excuse me, goes into a second year, Watson's second year, right? Jordan Love goes through and gets a little bit better timing. I think this running game is going to be great, healthier up front. You go through the list here. I think their quarterback play is going to be better with Jordan Love in 2023 than what it was with Aaron Rodgers in 2022. And this team with a better quarterback play doesn't have to be great. Just doesn't have to be, you know, middling and average like Aaron Rodgers was last year. This team wins the division. That being said, I think the Detroit Lions, I think they're the second best team. I think they probably win 10 games and make a wild card. I think they're a playoff team. 
I just think this team has got too many young guys, too many guys who haven't been there before. I think injuries could be a concern. I think they're going to have a few letdowns. People forget the Lions had their surge last season after they were almost eliminated, right? They were one and seven, I think, after eight games, one and six after seven, something like that. And look, at that point, you're just sneaking up on everybody and credit to them. They did a great job finishing. They're not going to sneak up on anybody in 2023. And I think that's going to hurt them a little bit. I think the Chicago Bears are the third best team in this division, though. I think the Bears are going to win eight games. I'm going to say it right now. I think this is a team trending in the right direction. I think the only thing that's going to hurt them is that they're probably one or two more defenders away. They're a little young still at some spots, some spots on defense. I love Stevenson. I love Brisker. I just want them a little more experience. I think Justin Fields has his best season passing by far. I just think they got a lot of new pieces this year. They're going to have to figure some of the lumps out. They're going to look a lot like the Detroit Lions of 2022, the Bears will in 2023. And then in 2024, I think the Bears are going to be serious contenders. And then you have the Minnesota Vikings. I don't think they're going to be a bad team. I think they're going to win between seven and 10 games. I just think they're getting older at the wrong time. I think Dalvin Cook was a much bigger part of the offense than people think. Kirk Cousins is solid, but not spectacular. Their defense isn't very good. I think this is an okay team. I don't think they're a great team. So that's my list. My list. I've got the Packers winning it all in a brutal con- contest with Detroit Lions. The Bears surprised a lot of people, win eight or nine games, and the Vikings come in the rear, finishing last in the NFC. Game.